Thanks everyone for joining this webinar. I appreciate everyone from around the world joining this call. Uh, so I'm going to give you a brief introduction to IEEE 2030.5. Uh, many of us refer to it as uh, still SCP 2.0. Give you a technical overview and then I'll talk about the uh, our test tools and how uh, the test tools support the uh, IEEE 2030.5 and DER. So the uh, IEEE 2030.5 is really what we consider modern application protocol and really designed to control and manage uh, devices and energy devices within the home. Some examples are smart meters, inverters, smart appliances, EVs, and so forth. So it's really geared towards um, a, you know, a messaging protocol to convey events and actions that devices could take upon. Some examples are, you know, you have a hot afternoon uh, during summertime and the utility would like to convey some critical peak pricing to uh, homes and what you would do is use a DRLC event to convey that from the utility all the way down to energy capable devices or DR capable devices within the home. Another example really designed for DER and DER technology is leveraged upon the 62850 and SunSpec as Tom has alluded to. And uh, it's really perfectly designed to send a, for example, a low voltage ride through setting to a set of uh, smart inverters. As many of you know, quite a bit of activity is around California Rule 21 and CSI around that right now here in the US. And uh, the standard is really, uh, there was a lot of effort to focus on using common technologies, commonly available technologies. So some examples are XML, which is used really not just in smart energy, but everywhere, that there's a web communication, and also HTTP, as well as IPv4 for backward compatibility, and also IPv6 for future uh, and current networks. And the standard has been harmonized with uh, 62050, SunSpec, IETF, and so forth. So taking that further, it's really, um, the standard is organized into what they ca call uh, function sets. And those familiar with SCP-1, they refer to as clusters. Same idea, it's a way to organize these different features into groups. And the most important really um, out of the standard is smart energy function sets. So these are what we, cons we consider as business-oriented features. You know, function sets, functions and features that businesses could make um, businesses and money out of. So demand response is one, DER certainly is another, metering, pricing, and so forth. And then uh, these smart energy function sets are built upon what we consider core building blocks that are known as common and support resources. So to convey demand response DER events, you need, to com you need to have some way of communicating time. So these are some of the uh, building blocks um, that uh, the smart energy function set are built upon. And they, the standard plugs right into the use of uh, and supporting California Rule 21. Um, as Tom and James have uh, mentioned, it is a default communication protocol to connect with grid-connected inverters. It fully supports the uh, various smart inverter controls that are defined by SunSpec and 62050 Part 90-7. And I'll talk further about it. I'll actually give you a demo, short demo on it as well. And as uh, many of you know, there's a lot of activities really regarding pilots and testing, and some of them we're directly engaged in uh, using IEEE 2030.5 capable smart inverters and utility DER head and systems. So uh, Tom uh, used this table, and it's a really good one just to give you an uh, overview of how the inverter controls map to these other standards. And on the right-hand side is really the SCP-2 or IEEE 2030.5, and how much of that our test harness supports. As you can see from the table, our currently shipping version 1.1 directly supports all of the DER controls that are in this table. So how does that um, map to our test harness further? So our currently shipping product supports DER, DRLC, metering, pricing, and other smart energy features. And it's, the shipping version is used by uh, Underwriters Laboratory and TTA in Korea. 
to perform uh, conformance testing currently. In fact, there's uh, three devices that's been tested, and it's available uh, on our website, which uh, James will talk further about. So to support the California Rule 21 inverters uh, related features, uh, we support fully all of the immediate control and what's known as curve-based controls in our shipping product. So what we plan to support in our accelerator version 2 program that we plan to develop this year is uh, what's commonly known as aggregator related features. And what that means is it's a way to group uh, a set of inverters to a DER uh, set control uh, events. And we plan to support that and develop that later this year. So before I do the demo, I want to give you some uh, uh, high-level background to these test tools. Uh, we have two test tools available for use. Functional Test Suite is, is a very easy-to-use automated test harness that's been approved and developed for CSET, uh, for, developed to support the phase one tests that are defined by CSET. And that was approved last year, and as we have noted, UL and TTA are actively using our test harness to perform conformance testing for uh, commercial devices currently. And then the second test tool that we have is what we call ad hoc tester. That is really designed for interoperability testing, and we give the user full control of test scenarios, including the DER event. So before I do the demo, I'll give you the scenario description of the scenario that I'll be running. And it's a, it's a scenario that actually some of our customers are using as we speak today. Uh, you, you know, what we're going to demo is our test harness server acting as a utility-owned DER head-end system. And what we're going to do is create a DER control event to limit maximum power and also do a volt bar curve. And you'll see in the, in the demo that these are not the only two inverter control modes or events that you could control. You could configure any of the supported uh, modes that are supported in IEEE 2030.5. And we're also going to show our client, which is going to act like a smart inverter, fetching and retrieving that information about the DER event, process it, and also act upon that event. And for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes, we're going to keep this demo fairly short. In fact, the demo, uh, the DER control event is going to last just 10 seconds. And uh, again, that's all fully configurable, and uh, it's only 10 seconds just for the sake of uh, demonstration. Okay? So um, let me uh, share the other screen I have. And what I'm doing right now is uh, bringing up our uh, test tools. As our test tools, while I do that, I'll, I'll also give you some background to it as well. Our test tools are native uh, Windows application uh, that supports the Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7, both 32- uh, and 64-bit flavors. So let me move that out of the way. And I'm showing you both sides of the client and server. Typically, this is not what a customer would do. Customer, if they're developing a server, they'll be using our client to test it and vice versa. But for demonstration purposes, we're kind of acting both sides of the exchange to give you an overview of how our test tools work. And also, you get a, a preview to how SAP2 uh, in real time uh, work as well. So this is, we're, we're looking at the server side. And what we're doing is we're basically emulating a utility-owned DER head-end system. And uh, the DER head-end system, a utility will uh, configure a DER event. And in fact, uh, what we're doing here is uh, configuring a fixed watt, maximum fixed watt control event, along with the VOLVAR. And as you can see, there's um, about 10 different options available, and this is fully compatible with uh, what the SunSpec has defined as far as inverter, direct control, and curve-based controls, as well as 6150 standard. And uh, the 10-second duration is configurable here, so you could change that to 60, 36, you know, 3,000 seconds, whatever you wish. And then uh, I'm 
I'm also giving you the other side of the exchange, which, which is the DER uh, client. And DER client, this side, you know, you basically um, reflects what's uh, otherwise known as nameplate ratings and the capabilities of a smart inverter. So uh, based upon the, the specific inverter you're trying to emulate or test, you will configure the, the ratings here and also what it's capable of. Okay. All right. So um, normally I would go through other parts of the system, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to keep this uh, relatively short. And if you're interested in further details of how the various pieces uh, in our test harness works, including the functional test suite, which I won't have time to demo today, I would be happy to set up a private webinar with you. So I'm going to start the server, and then I'm also going to start the client. So you'll see, when I start the client, you're going to see a lot of exchanges that's going to happen. And I'll explain what's happening at the end uh, when it finishes. So right now, it's, we're still looking at the server, and server has scheduled a DER set of actually two DER programs and events. And I'm pretty sure it's going to go active. And I'm now let's look at the client. So this is emulating a DER smart inverter. And as you can see, it's active and participating in that limit maximum power and volt bar capability. So um, let me also show you briefly what our test tools display as far as uh, what messages you can inspect and so forth. So what's ha what what happened just now is there was a set of SAP 2 event messages that was communicated, that was sent and received by the server and client. And what our test tool does is capture each of those. And you could actually click each of them individually to inspect what, what the underlying SAP 2 messages that are being communicated over the uh, HTTP or HTTP channel. Okay, so this is a actual raw HTTP message that will be communicated. What essentially did was it, the client requested what's known as a device capability. And let me show you what the server responded back with. And if, you know, if, if uh, you're familiar with uh, SAP2 and how that works, whenever a server receives a get DCAP request, the server is supposed to respond back with this capability. Okay, telling the client, okay, so I'm capable of supporting this, you know, for example, DER events or DMAM response and so forth. So our server supports multiple uh, programs like that. So it's, it's telling the client, I support demand response. I also support DER, messaging, response, and so forth. So this kind of gives uh, the user, the client, an idea of what, what kind of server you're communicating with and what kind of uh, programs and events that it supports. Okay, so our test tool basically captures each of those. Uh, I'm not gonna run through all of them, but uh, it also gives you a raw dump of it, uh, and this is including if you even if you're communicating in TLS mode, which is encrypted, we'll basically unencrypt it and show you the unencrypted readable message. Okay, so this is kind of another view to the whole exchange that happened. And then finally, what we also do is analyze uh, what's known as PICS. PICS is otherwise known as, you could think of it as testable requirements from a standard. And all these names that you see on the left-hand side, DSGM1 and so forth, they directly map to uh, what CSEP has defined as far as testable requirements. And what this table is showing is, in real time when we ran that exchange, our test tool is analyzing each of the messages that are sent and received, and we're basically checking against all these requirements and making sure that either they, either they pass, fail, or have generated some warning. So we basically communicate or convey the, each exchange and each of the testable requirement that we check, and we're presenting the analysis to the user. Okay, so that's the end of the demonstration. So let me, uh, James, you want to hand, take it back? Uh, yes, I think I have it back. Okay, great, thank you, Steve. So what we'll do uh, now is talk a little bit about the conformance test program that we're doing with both uh, Underwriters Lab and uh, TTA in, uh, um, in Korea. And I know that uh, we've got someone from uh, TTA on, so thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, the conformance test program is uh, becoming a recognized conformance test program to ensure conformance to the uh, IEEE 2030.5 specification. Um, the, it implements 
what the, the CSEP test specification and the CSEP phase one approved test harness, which is our test harness, uh, Quality Logic. It's designed really for easy adoption by the industry, and um, we're hoping at some point to uh, move it uh, move it over to a formal industry alliance to uh, to operate. We based it on uh, what's called the Interoperability Process Reference Manual that was developed by the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel. So it's a, um, you know, we like to claim it's a, a well well designed uh, uh, conformance test program. And there's some, we mentioned uh, testing is conducted by uh, UL and by uh, TTA in uh, in Korea. First three products are, have already been uh, tested by UL and the reports are available. And uh, in fact, there's a um, web page that uh, uh, shows the reports with links or shows what's been uh, tested and uh, links to the reports. So um, and the Got a link here. Uh, when you get the slides, you'll have access uh, to this uh, web page. So um, I'll ask Bill uh, Kovacki if uh, you want to add anything, Bill. Uh, thank you, James. Uh, this is Bill Kovacki from UL. Really, the only thing I want to add is um, one distinct advantage uh, that we noticed as the conformance test house uh, during the process of testing these three products was that the the product designers having access and having used the same test tools uh, during the design of their products that we use during the conformance testing um, actually accelerated the process of our testing uh, when things uh, came up that that were either a warning or, or even possibly a fail, uh, both the, the product designer and the UL staff uh, were able to essentially speak the same language, see the same results uh, within the test tool, having the manufacturer's familiarity with the testing tools we use as a conformance test house was a, a very positive benefit to uh, enabling both us and the manufacturer to get through the process of evaluating uh, these these three products. So just from that uh, respect alone, um, having, as a product designer, having these tools available uh, should show uh, some, maybe even significant benefit uh, when we get to that uh, stage of conformance testing.